Hey everyone, welcome to week one of digital writing. You're watching lesson one for module one. What is digital writing? Uh, in this video, I'll be asking you to think about that question, what is digital writing, and discussing a few important pieces of research on digital writing that can help us answer that question, one of which you'll actually be reading for this module. So the first piece of research I'll be talking about is the executive summary of a report put out by the Pew Internet and American Life Project and College Board's The National Commission on Writing called Writing Technology in Teens. This is the piece you'll actually be reading for this module, the required piece, and it's important that you do so um, because I'm not actually going to be talking about the whole piece here, just little snippets of it. And as a side note, I know that many, if not all of you, are no longer teens, uh, but the report made me reflect on my own writing during my teenage years uh, and how those writing practices are kind of different, but kind of actually still the same. Uh, for one thing, both as, an, as a teen and as an adult, I have used and continue to use uh, instant messaging uh, really quite frequently. Um, and I actually use it in pretty similar ways as I did back then. Uh, so what's changed is, you know, which messenger I actually am using um, and the features available to me through the service. So not to be melodramatic, but introducing GIFs into Facebook Messenger changed my life. Also, uh, before we move on, let's rewind a bit and define a key term that I actually used just now, kind of slipped it in there, uh, because it's one that will actually come up a lot in this class, writing practices. To call writing a practice recognizes that writing is not just a noun, so like we think about here's a piece of my writing um, that's a noun, but it's also used as a verb, as in I'm writing a paper for my English class, or I'm writing a text to my mom about travel plans for the holidays, or I'm writing a response to this commenter before I rage quit Facebook. A practice account of writing recognizes that writing as an action is affected by social, cultural, historical contexts, and by the tools that we use to do that writing. Facebook, Microsoft Word, uh, pen and paper, what have you. So when you're asked to think about writing practices, think about all of the situations in which you do writing. So writing social media posts, writing grocery lists, writing a paper for class, writing in a personal journal, writing music lyrics, the list could go on and on for probably ever. Uh, but whatever type of writing you're thinking about, Think about those social, cultural, historical, and technological contexts, especially the technological contexts that surround the situation. All right, back to the Pew report on writing technology in teens. So there's some big takeaways from this report, uh, and they include, among other things, uh, two really major things, and I'm going to cite directly from the report here. Uh, number one, quote, even though teens are heavily embedded in a tech-rich world, they do not believe that communication over the internet or text messaging is writing." Unquote. The next thing, quote, the impact of technology on writing is hardly a frivolous issue because most believe that good writing is important to teens' future success. Unquote. So one question I'd like you to consider, uh, kind of to take a break here, is do you consider writing, like instant messaging, text messaging, Facebook writing, etc., to be writing? If so, why or why not? So big takeaways are that teens don't actually think internet communication is writing, but that they do think writing is really important for future success in life. Interestingly, another takeaway from the study is that, quote, parents are generally more positive than their teen children are about the effects of computers and text-based communication tools on their child's writing. So for example, the report uh, shows that 43% of parents in the study thought that technology helps teens communicate well, while only 36% of the teens thought that. So that's, that's still less than half for both groups, even though you know, the parents thought that there was a more positive impact than the teens did. So one reason for this may be general attitudes about internet usage, uh, and I like to call this attitude uh, the kids these days. Um, and the report basically opens talking about ideas about the kids these days. And I'm going to read a little bit uh, from that report again. A considerable number of educators and children's advocates worry that James Billington, the Librarian of Congress, was right when he recently suggested that young Americans' electronic communication might be damaging what he called, quote, the basic unit of human thought, the sentence, unquote. They are concerned that the quality of writing by young Americans is being degraded by their electronic communication, with its carefree spelling, lax punctuation and grammar, and its acronym shortcuts. So that's what the report says. 
I hate to break it to James Billington, but old folks have been lamenting the kids these days for over two millennia. And not just kids these days in general, but specifically the kids these days in relation to writing. Greek philosopher Plato recorded his teacher and mentor Socrates' thoughts on writing, and boy were they not good. Socrates basically thought that writing was going to ruin human capacity for memory, and that writing was inherently bad because a piece of writing could be widely circulated without the original author present, and that meant that the original author wouldn't be around to clarify or defend what they said. So Socrates had plenty of other things to say about the kids these days, but we don't really have time for all that, so we're going to move on. In slightly more recent history, scholars in higher education have literally been asking the question, why can't Johnny write, for almost 50 years now. Why Can't Johnny Write is the totally problematic title of an article published by the National Council of Teachers of English and written by P.G. Aldrich in 1972. So, the idea that the kids these days can't write is not a new idea by any stretch of the imagination, and it's certainly not unique to critiques of social media and technology. So, let's take a look now at other attitudes about writing and social media technologies. One in particular that's writing in a direct response to cries of, why can't the kids these days write? So in 2011, a group of writing researchers published a study of the language features of instant messaging. They looked at what's known as a corpus of texts and analyzed it in order to seek out common features of the language being used. They collected transcripts of 54 IM conversations from 103 participants uh, from students at a public university in the Midwest. This corpus of IM sessions included around 32,000 words from those 54 IM sessions. So it's a pretty big corpus. So this study has a lot of really cool findings, but for time's sake, I'm only going to talk about a few of them. First, though, I'm going to back up a bit and explain what I mean by a language feature. A language feature is something used consistently across uh, language users uh, that have generally agreed, agreed upon meanings. So, for example, one feature that the study found was frequent use of punctuation to indicate pausing, typically indicated by a series of periods after a word. You've probably used this feature before in your own IM and text conversations, and I know that I have. So one really interesting feature, um, language feature, that I want to bring up from the study is something that's called I dialect. Uh, now before reading the study, I had never heard that word before, so I'm going to explain uh, what it means. I'm not going to assume you know what it means either. Uh, it's just the practice of writing language, um, how someone would say it out loud. So when you type the words wanna or gonna, or for me, I'ma, meaning I'm going to, right? I'm, I'm gonna go to the store in a second. Um, that's using I dialect. Lest you think that I dialect is something unique to internet discourse, I'm happy to tell you that the phrase originally comes from the study of literature. Charles Dickens, William Faulkner, Mark Twain, and Terry Pratchett are just a few famous writers who have used I dialect in their writing. Another really interesting finding was that rather than shortening speech in service of speed of typing, there are actually more features that they found that actually added keystrokes to words, uh, suggesting that, quote, brevity and speed are not of primary importance for I am writers, close quote, um, which is kind of what John Billington and his, you know, his cronies were kind of saying that that's one way that, you know, I am and technology is ruining language. The, these researchers say no, uh, that's not actually happening. Uh, people aren't even, people are actually using uh, more characters um, to type and, and they're not actually shortening things as much as you would think. So for example, instead of simply writing um no to respond to someone, someone might write um no. And this brings me to the major point of the study. Most of the unique features of IM writing are related to what's called paralinguistic inscription. Paralinguistic means in addition to language and is often used to refer to things like smiling, laughing, gesturing, and so on. All things that you can't do when you're using IM to chat with someone. The authors of this study found that many of the language features of IM are designed uh, to uh, quote, they say, incorporate into writing the paralinguistics of face-to-face -face communication. So think about the difference from of someone saying to your face, I'm fine, versus I'm fine. If they just type the words I'm fine, you can't really get that extra vocal tone and facial expression to kind of help you understand what they're saying. So 
To bring this video to a close, I want to read one more quote uh, from the study of, of I am language features. Um, in response to the haters, the authors of this study say, Crystal 2008 made the important point that healthy, vital languages are always changing. Seen in this way, I am is hardly the ruin of the English language, but rather a type of change that indicates the healthiness of written language, especially among the young people who are mostly doing the work of defining its parameters. So, good job, young people. Keep up the good work.